How's it going today, everybody? Welcome back to Troy's Hobbies. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, we're just going to be over here on the bench, and we're going to be talking about um, the different categories and classifications of RC monster trucks. Um, I find that whenever you go online and you look and you type in the generic term RC monster truck in your search bar, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of options. And if you're a new buyer or somebody interested in RC, it can be really confusing. So what I'd like to do today is kind of um, uh, go down the list and uh, show some different styles and variations and uh, maybe break things down a little bit better for people to understand that are new to buying a truck. So let's get over on the bench and let's talk about some different classifications. All right, so before we get into the discussion, uh, I just want to kind of explain kind of where RC monster trucks came from and where they are these days. Um, the first RC monster trucks were pretty much classified um, off of off of racing, uh, off of off road racing. Uh, they would come out of you know the buggy classes and the stadium truck classes, and primarily most of what you see classified as an RC monster truck is actually closer to an RC stadium truck than it is a monster truck, uh, being two wheel drive, four wheel drive, or uh, whichever. Um, and we'll talk about both here in just a minute. But that's pretty much where the split happens. Um, you have the stadium truck style monster trucks, like you have these, uh, which are like your stampedes and things like that. Uh, the next kind of classification I would give them is your stunt trucks, your stunt style monster trucks uh, or monster truggies even. Um, that would be all of the bigger basher classes. And we'll get into some of that as well. Um, those trucks, those are the kings of the basher class. Um, those are the absolute undisputed kings of top sales in RC right now. Uh, that's where you're going to find all of your your new Traxxas, uh, the new Sledgehammer, the Armas, all that kind of stuff is going to be in that classification. Um, but the main classification of monster trucks, and the one that I find to be, honestly, the most legitimate, yet the most underserved in the entire hobby, is the actual solid actual mo axle monster trucks. Solid axle monster trucks... Um, have the least amount of trucks in each category. Um, and with that, the only options you have a lot of times is aftermarket support or just custom fabrication from the beginning. So we're going to get into the discussion and let's start off with the stadium trucks. All right, so we're still here on the bench with the same three trucks um, and we're going to get to these guys in just a minute. But the first classification of trucks I want to talk about are what I call 10th uh, scale two-wheel drive stadium style monster trucks. Uh, again, they're based off of a stadium truck style platform. Um, two-wheel drive, typically the motor will be located in the back. Uh, they're very simple. Uh, this is typically the lowest cost price point you can get an RC monster truck. Uh, it's great for a beginner. They're simple to work on. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is where you're going to find Basically, uh, the truck's listed as follows. You're going to find the Traxxas Stampede two-wheel drive and the Traxxas Bigfoot. Uh, those are going to be classified in this class. You'll have the Arma Granite Voltage. Those will be in this class. Um, the Team Corrali Triton. That will be in this class. And the ECX Amp, Axe, and Brutus, which are all the same platform. They will be in this class as well. Um, there are probably others in this category as well. But those are your main um, selections when it comes to the two-wheel drive category. So let's go ahead and just talk about the next class, which is the ones that you see here on the screen. And these are the stadium-style four-wheel drive trucks. Um, we'll just start here at the top. This is my, my Traxxas Stampede four-wheel drive Bigfoot. Um, mine's been converted to brushless, and it has all kinds of upgrades and things like that in it. Um, it does not come with a Bigfoot body. You have to custom make this yourself or get the ready to run body. Mine's custom painted. Um, that's a different color. Um, you have the DHK cross right here, 
which is, in my opinion, one of the best ready-to-run 10th scale four-wheel drive trucks in this class. Extremely durable, um, really lightweight, and has a good brushless system in it, so nice and powerful. Um, let's see, what else is in this class? Uh, we'll just go ahead and talk about the Team Associated Rival MT-10, which we just recently reviewed here on the channel. This truck is awesome. Uh, again, very similar to the DHK Cross. Uh, all plastic chassis and everything. Um, very lightweight but powerful with the brushless system that's in it. And um, I can't say enough about these trucks. These, these guys are really, really fun, lightweight, nimble trucks to drive. Um, they're, they're, they're a fun driver's class is what I would say. They're a good step up from the two-wheel drive stadium trucks into this class. And uh, you get a little extra ground clearance and a little extra jumping performance. So yeah, I can see why these are one of the most popular classes. So let's go ahead and switch it up on the table and we'll switch up to the next class of trucks. All right, everyone, the next classification of vehicles I wanna talk about, um, I would say is the, the most um, oversaturated market in all of RC period. And that would be the, the stunt trucks or the monster truck, truggies. Uh, monster buggies, if you want to call them. Um, this would be like, like as you see here, like your team Corrali cars. Uh, I have the skier here, but the Kronos, the Punisher, um, all of those types of cars, those are the types of vehicles that would qualify in this category. Big wheels, but big, long pan style chassis um, and big old squishy tires. That's pretty much what classifies this vehicle. I also have like a DHK zombie here. Uh, it's a bit of an older model, but uh, it's still around. And uh, again, similar. Um, you get like a metal pan chassis uh, based off of a buggy or a truggy platform. Three open di differentials, independent suspension. That's pretty much what classifies this, uh, this, this, this genre of vehicle. And these guys are the absolute kings of the basher class. Um, you're going to find everything in this class. All of your big Traxxas cars are in this class. Uh, uh, the Traxxas Max, even though it's a plastic chassis, that definitely still qualifies. Uh, the version 1 or version 2 of that. The E-Revo, that classifies for this. The, uh, the new one, the Sledgehammer, I would put that in this class as a monster truggy. Uh, in the Arma class, you have the Notorious... You have the Outcast and you have the Cratons. Um, those are the ones I would classify in this category. Again, those are the, the absolute kings of the basher world. So like whenever you're out there, those are the guys you're going to typically see. You've got the Team Corrali cars, like I said, the Skeeter, the Kronos, and all of their other options. That classifies. Um, you have the Techno MT410. That would definitely be in this class. And the Red Cat Kaiju. That would be in this class, again, with a plastic chassis. So there are some variants. Uh, and then the new associated MT-8, uh, that would definitely be in this category as well. So as you guys can tell, I mean, there are a ton of options in this category. This is the single uh, biggest category in RC right now, I would say, period. These are the number one selling vehicles that you're going to find in most markets. Um not necessarily a beginner friendly vehicle because these are typically four to six S powered and quite heavy. Um, so I would say a more advanced or experienced driver would typically want to do this category. Um, I wouldn't want to start you there. I would start you in the 10th scale. Um, but other than that, this, these guys are the absolute king of the basher world. So these are the trucks you're going to be seeing at all the jumps, all the dirt jump parks, all the skate parks all that kind of stuff. These are the typically the trucks you're going to see used. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the smallest and underutilized segments of the hobby. All right, everybody, we're going to talk about the category that I would find the fewest buying options. Um, these would be called uh, 12th scale solid axle monster trucks. Um, again, these will not have a an independent suspension on them. They're going to have a straight solid axle on the bottom. Uh, the shocks will be mounted vertically. Uh, they'll typically have 
uh, four link sit-ups on the bottom for a suspension. Uh, and so, and these are kind of, uh, they're, they're small. They're, they're a little bit smaller. They're closer in size to the 10th scale stadium trucks, uh, both the four wheel drives and two wheel drives. Uh, they're closer to that in scale, I would say. Um, but they're still really, really fun to drive. But a lot of these trucks are either very rare, like these two trucks here, um, or hard to come by, like this one over here, or there's just not a lot of options on the market. So uh, this one here is probably the hardest one you're going to be able to find. And this is a custom body that I did. This is actually the body that goes on this truck. Uh, this truck actually comes with the Batman body on it. Um, this is the um, the Remo Hobby 1096 Batman truck. Uh, this is a truck you can only get from overseas, if at all. Uh, this took me a long time to source one and to find, and even longer to find parts for when I broke it. So this truck really is just a display piece at this point. Um, it's a really cool truck. It comes with four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering. It comes with a brushless setup in it right out of the box. So there's a lot of pluses to this truck. Unfortunately, I do find that the axles are quite brittle and uh, they probably could have done with metal axle housings right out of the box with this truck. Um, I have broken a few things on it, but again, since I'm just using it as a display at this point, it's fine as is. Um, my other option over here is the HPI Wheelie King. This truck has been out for some time. Um, this thing is probably 15 years old or more at this point, this particular truck. Um, it's been customized and gone through uh, by a few different owners before me. And now that I've got it, I'm going to hopefully be going through it and doing a restoration project on it pretty soon on the channel. So you guys can look forward to seeing this old Wheelie King getting torn down and hopefully we'll get it running. I mean, it's it's got working electronics in it. It's got uh, most of the running gear in it. We just have to figure out some drive shafts and some front axle parts, and I think this old girl will run again. So that's going to be those. Uh, the other two options you really have in this class are the Sin Racing trucks, uh, the B50, or the B150, and the HO150. They also have the JEGS model. Uh, they're the manufacturer of the new JEGS model, if you've seen that. Um, that's actually what you have is a Sin Racing truck. Um, and then the other truck you have in the category is the uh, the MST MTX1, I believe that's what that's called. Um, again, those two trucks, again, smaller in scale like these two, um, somewhat hard to come by, but you can find them out there. So again, this is the most underserved segment of all of the RC monster trucks, are these little guys, the 12th scale monster trucks. Um, what I consider, if you are racing monster trucks and you know the monster truck world, these are what I consider the proper 2.2 trucks. These, these are not 10th scale. The, the 2.2 trucks should be smaller like 12th scale like this. Just my personal opinion. Just, you know, the whole video here is just my personal opinion. So let's just go ahead and move on to the next segment of trucks. And we'll talk about the big guys. Before we talk about this class of trucks, I just want to go over a couple of the, the larger scale trucks that you can find on the market. Um... These would be uh, what I consider like the Traxxas X-Max, which would be your large scale stunt trucks. Um, the, the, Out, or the Outcast and the Creighton 8S by Arma. Those would classify in this category as the large scales, uh, the stunt trucks. Um, those are the only big scale stunt style monster trucks out there. As far as I know, there could be others out there. Um, but as far as that, there's only one option, uh, one option for a large scale solid axle monster truck. And as you guys know, that could be the Primal RC Raminator. Um, that thing is massive and it's really, really cool, but it is very, very expensive. It is not for everybody in the hobby. Uh, only a certain segment of the hobby can really afford stuff like that. So that's pretty much why you don't see it here on screen. Obviously, it wouldn't even fit on this table. Those things are things are the size of a German Shepherd. So, yeah. So let's go ahead and talk about this, this classification here. Uh, this is what I would consider the main, most realistic segment of RC monster truck racing. And that is the 10th scale solid axle monster trucks. Um, 
These are what we typically race in the pro level classes. Um, that's what these two trucks are here. Um, awesome Kong here being an Axial SMT 10. Um, this is my sport mod truck. It runs a brushed uh, 17 turn motor uh, and a brushed ESC. Uh, it's tuned down a little bit in power. It's kind of like a mid-grade racing class. Uh, and then we have over here, which is a low C LMT. Uh, but this is all decked out with all the trio components and everything else. Uh, custom electronics. Uh, this is a pro mod. So it runs in, a, in the highest level racing class. Um, the Mad Dog here, again, both these trucks will be seen on the Trigger King Racing Series um, over the next season. So you guys can look forward to that over the next year. You'll be seeing these trucks on the internet quite a bit. Um, there's also my other stock LMTs and things like that. But we'll go over a couple of the other options in this class. Um, the first one I want to talk about is probably the oldest one in the class. Um, it's absolutely the oldest one in the class. It's the Tamiya Clodbuster. Um, that truck is, is really, really cool. It's been around since, I believe... It came out in 1986, so it came out the year I was born. Um, that truck has been around a long, long time, but it only appeals to a certain segment of the market. It's going to appeal to the retro solid axle racers, uh, guys like myself. Uh, we, you know, Obviously, I want to build a retro at some point, and I totally intend on doing so. Um, but the only other type of people that it's going to appeal to are vintage Tamiya collectors. Um, so it's a very limited market it that the, uh, the Tamiya Clodbuster really fits into. Um, so it's kind of tricky. Um, it's it, only certain people really want that truck. Um, your other option would be the Kyosho USA one, which was re-released. Um, but again, that truck is technically an eighth scale. It's a little bit bigger. Um, a lot of the racing guys aren't going to buy that truck because a lot of the racing rules, uh, the truck doesn't fit into certain size regulations and things like that. So it kind of just limits it to being on the basher market or a collector's item, once again, like the Tamiya Clodbuster. Um, I would even argue that the vintage USA 1 Kyosho from back in the 80s, the only people that want that are collectors because it's so rare. Um, your only other option as far as on the market right now would be the Red Cat Ground Pounder. And again, that truck's been around a long, long time. And compared to the... SMT 10 even, it's it's nowhere near as durable as even this guy. And it's definitely, definitely not in the same classification as the low C LMT. So until Red Cat revises that truck, which I really hope they do, you know, you know, there's a huge opportunity for these manufacturers to open up the floodgates to this specific market. We race these trucks. Um, low C's in the game now. Axial's in the game. You know, Red Cat's got the Ground Pounder, which, I mean, I hope that they come back with a new version of it because there's a lot of potential there. Um, I'd really like to see Traxxas come in and, you know, come in at one of these trucks. Um, that would blow people's minds, I think. Um, anybody. You know, this is a racing class. I really do think that um, manufacturers could see these not just as a, a toy basher class, but a full-blown competition platform. So that's going to be it, you guys. That's pretty much my rant on the monster truck stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and cut over, and I'll give you guys my, my final thoughts for the day. Well, everybody, as you can see, there's a ton of options out there if you're in the market for shopping for an RC monster truck. There's tons of categories, tons of options, um, a lot to think about if you're in the market. Um, again, I'd like to see some manufacturers kind of step up the solid axle monster truck game as I'd like, I'd like to see that segment of the hobby really grow. Uh, we've been racing solid axle monster trucks for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, only just recently with the SMT-10 and the low C LMT have manufacturers really started taking it seriously. And I do think there's a window of opportunity for a new segment to really, really grow. As you can see, the basher side of things, the basher monster trucks, those things are everywhere. We've got them in every single category you can think of. Um, I believe that that side of the market is fully saturated at this point and that the real guys, the real monster truck guys, not, not to throw shade or anything like that, but the real guys that do the solid axle stuff, we really would like to see some more options on the market. Um, a lot of us that race on the bigger scale, 
we have to fully customize our trucks, uh, which is good. There's a ton of aftermarket and custom fabricators out there, like Mike, which you've seen in previous videos. There's a ton of guys out there that are making excellent parts for RC Monster trucks. These guys are skilled machinists. They have excellent machinery. They have excellent ways to make really, really nice product. Yeah, I have Trio on some of my vehicles. Uh, I've, I've used Crawford Performance Engineering for certain things, uh, JERRC for certain things, you name it. If you've got a good product, I like to use it. I'm not, I'm not going to be biased about any of this stuff. I'm just a real guy that loves my monster trucks, and I hope this clears up any, any confusion that you may have if you're purchasing a truck or if you just wanted to know more information about what these things actually are. Um, so that's going to be it for today, you guys. I just want to say thanks for watching. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you can. Subscribe if you guys are new. Uh, follow me on social media. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Troy's Hobbies RC. Um, and you can find more information and things like that on Troy's So we're going to say thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later.